Hey everybody, Derek here from Addictive Tips. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to get a DLNA server working with MediaToom. So to start off, to get the software installed, you're gonna to need to follow the instructions in the article below. Once you've got it started, you need to open up a terminal and do the following. So first, what you should do is you should run MediaToom as a command. Now what this will do is it'll generate a configuration file. And the reason we're doing this is because on some operating systems, you'll have a configuration file in in here. But on some operating systems, like mine in particular, you won't have it. So what you'll need to do in this case is just run this and it will create a default configuration. You can then press Control Z and you'll have a configuration file in this area here. From there, what you can do is uh, just copy this here, go to nano, and then paste that. And then you can go in and edit, and the only thing that needs to be edited here is the UI enabled. And then if this already says yes, you don't need to do anything, but if it says no, you need to change it to yes, and then press Control O and save it. From there, you'll need to do sudo systemctl enable media tomb. Enter your password. This will enable media tomb at the system level, so it'll always start at startup, and then you'll need to do sudo system ctl start media tomb. This will start the service instantly so it runs as a service. So now, what you need to do is you need to go and uh, open up a browser window, go to localhost, and then just 5500. Now this is the default media tomb setup. Now something I need to go over is if you're need, if you're going to add videos to your DLNA server from your home folder, you're going to need to quickly edit the permissions. This is because media tomb is running as a certain user, it's not running as the default user. It may not be able to access your stuff. So to solve this problem, what you'll do is sudo chmod 755 and then just home and then your username. In my case, it's Derek. So once I do that, I know that my permissions are viewable and I can go inside MediaToom. I can click home and I can go and I can click on the videos folder and I know that this file right here that I want to access is in my setup. So to add this, this particular video, I would click the plus sign. Now this is added to my server. If I want to add the entire directory, I can click scan mode. Uh, timed and I can have it basic or full, I can have it recursive, so any folder inside of it at any time is there. I can also include hidden directories or exclude them and I can change the interval in seconds. So if I want to have it scan every 45 seconds, I can do that. And then I click this, uh, like I said, for settings, click the plus sign and, and such. Then you go to your database and it collects things that I add through this browser here will add it to the database itself. So if I go to all videos, it'll show me that I have the Grand Tour, the first episode right here. So from there, if I want to watch this on any device, I'll need to know my IP address. So for this machine, because I'm accessing it locally, I know that my IP address doesn't matter in the browser, but if I want to access it on another computer, I need to find out the IP address, and to do that, I would do IP ADDR show, and then just pipe in the grep command to isolate the IP address for the machine, because this will filter out everything important. It'll filter out everything unimportant so that you can just see the IP address. And you do inet 192.168 and what that does is this isolates my IP address itself. So now I know that the IP address that I should be using to connect over LAN would be 192.168.1.132 and then just the port that we have set up for MediaToom and I have access. So that's how you access the web UI no matter what, wherever you're at. But if you wanna play the videos, you're gonna to need to get a device that supports DLNA. As long as your device acts, as long as your device has access over the internet, it'll be seen. But what you can do is to play the video on any PC, you just open up VLC. And if you don't have VLC, you can quickly install it. It's just 
like it's just VLC. So if you're on Ubuntu, just type in sudo apt install VLC and so on. Use your package manager to find it. So inside VLC, to access your MediaTomb server, you would click the playlist button. Now this gives you access to all of the individual services that the VLC player has. And what we need is universal plug and play. So once we click there, we see, okay, this is our MediaTomb server and this is the directories that I'm allowed to see all videos. And I know that my screencast that I'm recording right now is available, but I also know that my grand tour video is available that I added to the database. So then I just click. So when I click play, I know that this episode of the show that I added to my MediaTomb server is available. And this video will play no matter what. It'll play on my iPhone. If I have a DLNA server, it'll play on my Xbox. It'll play on my laptop in the next room. It'll play on whatever, as long as it has access through VLC and Universal Plug and Play or any device that supports Universal Plug and Play. So guys, that was just so guys, that was just a little breakdown on how to get MediaTomb working for your PC on Linux, how to set up a basic DLNA server. I know that it's more attractive to use something like Plex or MB on Linux, but if you use MediaTomb, it's actually much easier because it's supported by every single device out there basically supports DLNA. So all you need is DLNA support and you can instantly pipe videos directly to it. I hope this video was informative and I will see you next time.